Are you ready? Are you ready? Wait for it. Look for it. It's there. Are you ready to soar? Are you ready to explore? Are you ready to live your life the way it's meant to be lived? Let's reach new heights. Let's climb that mountain together. You can do it. Come on. Join me on a yogi venture. Hi, guys. Well, I hope everyone is still keeping safe during this time. You know, we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, I've been quite busy, but uh, I have made a choice to add as much joy as possible into my life. Still while being aware of the CDC's guidelines for keeping safe and healthy. Yeah, you know, I have good days and bad days still. Um, so look, I have so enjoyed recording and chatting with all my guests. I feel like each one has taught me something special and I'm so grateful that everyone agreed to be a, a guest on my podcast. Um, I hope you have been inspired by some of their stories. So this episode is my last one for season one. I can't believe that it's almost been a year. September 1st would have been the actual year in the first anniversary. And, um, but I'm stopping at on August 15th and I will be coming back. I'm looking forward to next season, but my topic's going to change a bit and I'll go into that a little bit later on. Season one has been all about the people who I've met who've inspired me and there's so many more. I just did not have enough time and enough resources to reach out to uh, other people who have really impacted my life. This is, and to be quite honest, uh, this first season, um, I was kind of, I was learning along the way, you know, learning how to speak, how to interview, how to keep it casual, just the, the technical side, a whole lot. Um, so I am celebrating uh, just that milestone that I actually kept my commitment and made it through and I'm so happy. Uh, but so anyway, so um, season two is just going to be a little bit different. Um, but I'm going to share more details about that later on as it gets closer to the time that I launch. And I don't even know when that's going to be yet. I'm, I'm taking a break, a little bit of a break. Um, but today I'm so excited because today's guest is Nikolai Sinclair. I met Nikolai a few years ago and I immediately knew that I wanted to know more about her. I was, she fascinated me. And um, she has a lovely spirit. She's open, no pretense, and just a joy to be around. So go ahead and settle in and listen and enjoy. Hi, guys. So I am super excited today. I am chatting with Nikolai Sinclair. And Nikolai has inspired me from the time I met her which was in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And uh, she had a yoga studio and I came in and I remember, I, this is the first time I really remember. I, I think you came in and as an introduction because you were a teacher there before you yes. became the owner. Yes. Right, right. And I, yeah. I'm, I'm not quite sure if I took your classes as a, I think I did because I, I, I think I took one. One. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, and then life got busy. And then I didn't see you for a while. And yeah. Then, and and yeah. I owned the studio. And yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, 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 yes. And then I came back and I auditioned and I had uh, um, a different, I remember we talked about how um, I had a different, uh, what is it? Um, uh, Experience. Or... Well, my, my I, I studied at Kripalo. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. And <laughs> Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Um, and uh, they taught. Center, like, I should say. It was, yeah, center. yoga said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a center. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I remember how they they had a different way of uh, just a different flow and 
And and because I think uh, uh, your training w- is different, and I don't know the, the yoga it philosophies. Vin- yeah, it, it was all it was vinyasa training in the beginning, yeah. and very very physical. Yes, yeah, Where and Paula got into that spiritual totally. Aspect, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which totally. which is what I needed at you yeah. know during that's just that Kapalo helped me. Um, yeah, Absolutely. but yeah, I so wish I had gone there. No, no, I no, no. no. Start, you know, just didn't start off spiritual for me. It started off physical. Yeah. Then the spiritual, whereas for you, it yeah. was spiritual in the beginning. So yeah. You got, you got a little head start. So. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, you know what? I, as you say, the universe gives you what you what you yeah, need. And I, um, when I was shopping around uh, for like what kind of philosophy, uh, I knew I needed to reconnect with my spirit. Mm-hmm. So, um, yes. <laughs> so anyway, I I had. When I, I remember when I first saw you, though, you had such a, you still do, have such a lovely energy. I was drawn to you, not in a sexual way, <laughs> but, in a, <laughs> but there was, there was, your energy was just endearing and um, I was fascinated by it. I still am. <laughs> Yeah, your no, spirit, your free yeah. spirit. That's I just picked it up and I was like, wow, yeah. who is she? What? And <laughs> yeah, you know, and then I think too, because I had, I don't know, like in terms of time, but I, um, my kids were getting older and, you know, I was searching a lot and, and I was just not finding a lot of people that uh, connected with me spiritually. So anyway, that's, that, and so you stood out. Let's just say and that. And in Harrisburg, you know, it's, right. you know, it's a little bit of a challenge. Though, yeah. Communities that if you're not a part of that community, then you you know yeah. really don't know that they even exist. <laughs> totally, so. that's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So go ahead and and tell us how how did you come to open that studio? How did you, you know? Yeah. So the the studio um, was originally uh, Yoga Nature, mm-hmm. um, and it was uh, ran by a couple. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I was a teacher there and it was kind of, I had the same experience, you know, or a similar experience to you when I actually walked into yoga nature for the first time is that, you know, I had moved from New York city to Harrisburg and it was a complete culture shock. First of all, it was just a complete culture shock. I had, um, I was in a new relationship, um, and, you know, trying to blend a family as a result of that relationship and, I just really felt alone, like in that situation and in, and in Harrisburg in general. Um, and I just, you know, I would drive by this studio and it was just like yoga huge on the, Mm -hmm. um, on the window. And I was like, let me just go in there. And the moment I walked in there, um, they had the Gayatri mantra on the wall and I was like, okay, I don't know. There was just something about that, that really, and then the owners didn't seem very pretentious. They were very free spirited. Yes. And seemed like some hippies out of like New York. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. Like Woodstock. And I, yeah. I'm totally attracted to that. Yes. Free spirit too. And so I was like, wow. You know, I took the class and it totally just spoke with me. And, you know, I joined the community. And I think a year later, she actually said the owner said that they were no longer going to operate the studio and that they were going to close it Mm -hmm. and I had been wanting to really so my interest in owning the studio was really for the boutique that I had you know I have a clothing line ontology that really caters to you know free-spirited spiritual people and so forth and I really wanted a place to bring that to fruition but it was only online at the time Mm. And so my reason for even going into that business was for the boutique aspect of it. I looked at the yoga part of it as just an added benefit or added revenue stream in case the boutique, you know, so I could kind of level the two. So it really wasn't even for the yoga because having a yoga studio always frightened me because I knew that I was starting to get away from the more physical aspects of yoga. And I was totally, it was even coming, when I was studying the physical, the Gyana yoga just spoke to me. That's the yoga of knowledge, right? That is the the yoga that spoke to me. And I kept on, you know, I was reading Swami Vivekananda a lot, right? And I just kept on, it just kept coming into my practice where 
it became more about that than the physical of it. And I saw that with the physical and no, you know, no, no judgment to anyone because I think it's still a beautiful, and Austin is a very beautiful practice, but there is a, a the ego, our ego is always being fed by these worldly things. But I was saying with the asana, how it was feeding the ego of people a little more because they were putting, you know, they started putting poses and it was just very on social media. You just saw it really, I just felt like that that aspect of yoga was, was not for me because it will do the opposite of what I was trying to do, which is really kind of just you know start to dismantle and destroy my ego egoic tendencies right and, yeah and do you do you mean like the like the, like when you're saying the poses that you see on social media the things where like people are doing like these weird i don't know yeah no yeah i mean everything right it's oh. like showing that i can do this okay oh yes I very showing better than you oh <laughs> right instead of instead of it being inclusive where everybody everybody exactly. type can yeah okay yes everybody type and yeah and, you know there and you know you're starting to see a lot of that come up today especially but you know yeah. it just wasn't as welcoming yes with the poses and the asana aspect of it wasn't just i didn't feel as welcome yeah. whereas when i started reading about the knowledge of yoga the gyan yoga it was like this is not even about any of this like really the goal the ultimate goal of enlightenment has nothing to really do with, pose. with a lot of this poses <laughs> right 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 it can, be a, it can serve as a path but yeah. ultimately yes even you can you can get addicted to that and and stay in that right and and not even try to reach that more spiritual you know, it, or yeah. it takes people some time so i was just starting to see just that that was starting to play out in my life that yeah. um oh that that um conflict mm -hmm. with the more physical and the spiritual and I was definitely leaning more towards spiritual. So opening up a studio was like, now I got to bring the business into it. Right. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's like you already got the, I mean, a yoga class and, and it's already a lot when you yeah. go into a yoga class. So you feel a lot of like, you know, sometimes a competitive nature. Yeah. You. you feel like you're not wanted or you're not like just all this mind stuff comes into play just in a class. Mm -hmm. Now imagine when you're owning a studio, you're actually taking in all of that. Everyone's the teachers, the students, you're taking in wow. all, all of that. And my teachers would told me early on, like when you own a yoga studio or even when you're just teaching, you're starting to take in all of that Everybody's energy from right. your class. And now, so now I'm like, and I just wasn't ready for it. Yeah. Like, but I was an opportunist. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You were like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and That's I great. jumped right in yeah, yeah. to the studio and totally was not ready for it. And it showed. Oh, uh, really? You think? Because from my... If from I my guess, you couldn't see it. I was no. good at thinking it. Girl, you were good because I did not see it. No, so I, I, I... Oh, my God. Here's what I saw. I lost a lot of teachers. No. You really? The only I thing I can no, I, your I feel like your dream was big. Like I feel like your dream, it should have been in New York, or or maybe not New York, in a city. Yeah. It, it, I just feel yeah. like, um, and I I don't want to. No no, no 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 you were no 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 I'm yeah. I'm serious because your vision I saw your vision, um, you were trying to elevate, hmm. I don't want to bash Harrisburg because I learned a lot about myself living there. And, uh, and I knew I was a fish out of water. Um, and I, I worked with a lot of people, meaning like parents and when I, when I would present some visions to school board people and it's just a way of life there. And every, your studio was beautiful. The, I only took classes with you. I don't, I think I might have experienced class with another teacher. I don't know from the outside, it was great, but I was like, wow, this, this needs to be like, she needs to be out of, out, out of her, this area <laughs> <laughs> because I, I just, I, I had experienced like, cause I would visit other yoga studios when I would travel and, uh, and you know, you had it going on. 
And it just was the area from from my yeah, standpoint. It, was, it had a lot to do with that. Um, and yeah, you know, I I was you know I was I, I am an African American, and I was trying to own a studio. That too. A predominantly, you know. Yeah. You know, non diverse, non you know. White yes. Guys, basically, just let's say it. For yeah, what it let's is. say it for what it is. Yeah. Yeah, and. Um, that's the reality. It was a beautiful studio. The yes. The location was absolutely grand yes. and beautiful. Location perfect? Location was great, absolutely. Yeah. And I think the, the troubles that I had was um, a lot of the chatter, you know, was mm. going on and um, just in my mind and, and really not feeling accepted. I, I mean, that mm. really would just... That really just, I just didn't understand why I wasn't necessarily accepted like the previous owner or like why I was getting certain vibes, you know. Mm-hmm. And and at the time, I totally was like my mind. And then when you're when you're in that situation and you're kind of feeling weak, your mind is going to take, it's going to just take control, yeah. right? Yeah, it's yeah. It's going to bring in. So you're you're thinking all this stuff. And my yeah. mind was just telling me that, that I just wasn't wanted there. And it was because of the color of my skin. Yeah. Not <laughs> yeah okay yeah and and yep. i just and and i do think that that was part of it but mm-hmm. the other part of it was that i also went in very business minded yeah and which you should have which i i think you should but yogis are different <laughs> they are free-spirited and they don't necessarily go with like you know they don't follow schedules they don't mm. always show up on time they want exceptions you know and <laughs> You got to be a little bit more compassionate and forgiving, which I wasn't at the time. I was strictly business minded. And like, to me as adults, you know, we should be at certain points in our life where we should be more responsible. And that's kind of the way I was operating my business. And I wasn't as forgiving to those that were um, not as responsible as I thought that they should be. You know what? Uh uh-uh. Their commitments and things like that. And uh uh-uh. go ahead. I, I don't care. <laughs> Yogis, because I hear this a lot with actors. You know, actors yeah, were yeah, flighty. Yeah. It's it's wrong. You have to run. You have to run your career like a business. If you're a yogi, you still have to have business. You still have to uh, demand respect and have people. If they're going to make a commitment to show up to teach your class Monday, Wednesday, oh, and Thursday. No, they have to do it. No, there is no. I mean, if you, you, I disagree because yeah, I, I. That's that's interesting though because I still kind of like mm-mm. now that I'm about to relaunch and I'm like no. How do I approach it? Because it is like totally people were just not showing Mm-mm. up and I had to like come in and leave my, you know, job and like yeah. teach their classes and and you know, I even was like, Hey, I had to let some of them go because I well, was like Yeah. You know, and in a community where there's I, I just don't think that that was you know, we, we play this double standard, right? It's like some people can get away with certain things and you know necess- you know you know, we just can't. It's just the way that it is. And uh-huh. this, and <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, no, and, don't and make it's it not necessarily easy. fair, but, and I just think that that wasn't well received, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. It just wasn't like trying to be that person who was trying to, um, you know, have a responsible studio and, yeah. and hire people that would commit was just very challenging. Wow. Yeah. 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 Commit yeah. to my vision. It's to, like I'm right. so passionate about this vision. Yeah. And I just had troubles, you know, with people committing to my vision. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in that lesson, I will say that I, you know, I probably should have been, you know, in hindsight, I didn't really have the time to be more, like, involved in, like, bringing the teachers together to really help them understand my vision. Ah. Like, it was all written down, right? It was kind of, you know, I thought it was obvious when you walked in, but I think I would have, in hindsight, I would have done more teacher activities where it was just us bringing the staff in and really sharing that vision so I can really embed it in them so that they would be committed because they felt like it was theirs as well. Okay. So I think a little bit of that would have helped as well. It's like in the beginning, I expected them to be committed where they necessarily didn't feel like it was their home automatically. I think I could have done a little bit more nurturing to to bring that to really embed that seed. Okay. So I think that that was also a part of it as well. Yeah, no, that might have helped because yeah, I did yeah. teach at a, a studio in Carlisle, and she did that a lot. Um, yeah, yeah. She she would have we'd have these meetings. Um, uh, 
not like I don't know quarterly yeah. where just just you know what are your concerns well, how do you think we can improve? you know that kind of thing and it and it did kind of bond us mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah 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 and I was only there for a year so everything was just happening so fast I was in a bad relationship and I was working still and so I didn't really have the time to, to do a lot of that but I do think that that is important just really yeah. instilling that sense of community um, and that bond like you said is very important so yeah this is learned yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah so where are you now and tell us tell us what it is that what's What's this new vision? <laughs> and wait, so gotta go I'm back first. Unapologetically going oh. mostly spiritual now. Like, okay, that's like, okay. okay. Okay, it's just like you know what I I'm tired of dancing around it. I'm tired of like not trying to include it in my in my in my uh, teaching. And I'm just like you know what those that are drawn to the spiritual aspects of yoga will come to my studio. Mm -hmm. The studio is going to be named the Veda uh, Den. And what does um, that mean? So the Vedas are the spiritual texts. Okay. You know the Vedas, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> Wait. Are, but for the audience, yeah, the Vedas are the spiritual texts that really are the the, the Hindu spiritual. Texts okay. Got it. That really are the foundation for yoga, yeah. meditation, all things to do with um, spirituality as it is seen in India. And you know, okay. from from the east. Okay. So, um, and there are the, there's this, this this spiritual text that really just outlines. They are where the Bhagavad Gita Bhagavad Gita came from, and um, they just are the foundation of of, of this entire practice that okay. we have in in, in Barcelona. And so. The den aspect of it is like to let you know, I wanted it to be the house, but the house is already protected. But the den aspect is to let people know that this is a place where you can come and study your higher self and oh. how to reach your higher self. Nice. Right? Higher levels of consciousness. It is where you can study the Vedas, which is, you know, we're not studying necessarily the text, but all that, that text is really what outlines everything that we know from a yoga yoga perspective yeah right? so it's where you can come and study that higher level of consciousness which involves self-inquiry mm -hmm. which is going within as well as how to operate in this world right okay. um as a spiritual person which is i think is and how to navigate this world as a spiritual person so it's a place for that and how do we do that the ways that we're going to do that is through meditation Oh, right. Okay. So it's not even. I mean, I'm going to have some yoga asana classes every, maybe you know, once a month and so yeah. forth. But the the studio is really geared towards meditation and finding deeper levels of consciousness by going mm -hmm. within and also understanding the external aspects of. Oh my of, God. Of spirituality as well. So I love that. What you were just saying is so important because I just feel like. Right now, with the climate of what's happening with Black Lives Matter, with with the election, with a lot, I think people are in need of a little bit of self exploration. Yeah. And I I really think in my heart that there are people who want to understand the uh, systematic racism and how certain groups have benefited and the um, because I'm a, I'm a part of a lot of, uh, of well not a lot I'm a part of this the you know, groups that where people are kind of asking you know white people are asking how can I be more aware of of race relations because it's not something that they've had to be aware of and now I think people are starting to kind of explore their own uh, way that they relate to people. <laughs> so I think that a center that like what you're uh, offering is kind of perfect. I, I, I <laughs> right? I definitely think that is absolutely needed. Yeah. Um, and I will say the practice of it has 
has just had a profound impact on my life that I just feel like I just want to share it with other people. Yeah. You know, and that's just, and yeah, that those questions of why, who am I? Yeah, yeah. Why am I here? Yeah, like that, what yeah. What am I thankful for? Yes. Um, how can I contribute to the greater good, you know? Right. How can I be more compassionate? Like those are, yeah. like self-inquiry deals with all of those questions. Why am I, uh, you know, attached to this particular title that I have at work? And, you know, why does it make me feel a certain way? And, mm -hmm. you know, it's like we all wear these different roles and have these different titles. Mm -hmm. But what happened? Who are you when you strip away the titles? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it, what I want to know. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what I want people to discover. It's like, who are you when you strip away these titles? Right. And what remains? Yes. What actually, from my personal experience, what remains has nothing to do with a lot of the things that we are involved yep. with on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, that's <laughs> right, right. No, I know. The labels so, that we give. The labels. Yep. So a studio that focuses on that, Yo. But also, because I, I really study heavily with Muji, who was one of my spiritual teachers, who who who, um, who really, you know, goes in deep on self inquiry. His whole entire um, set songs are based on self inquiry. Oh. And for a long time, especially after that, uh, after closing my studio and and um, you know being with my partner, I really needed to go inside and go yes. deeper and, and ask some of those questions you know yeah why do i feel a certain way why do certain things bother me why am i anxious to get so upset over this when mm -hmm. they're just clouds that are passing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if i were able to observe and allow the clouds to just pass and remain who i really am yeah you know yes that's where my strength lies mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was a huge part for me for like four or five years. I was studying this guy, right? Wow. But then when you're studying that, there is a bit of a conflict. It's like, how do I operate in this world knowing now who I, being able to touch, get in touch with who I truly am? How do I navigate this world? Yeah. So then I started seeking um, more understanding. And I actually went back to a teacher that I actually met before I even met Muji, oh. who I thought was too deep for me. Oh. Um, his, his way, his name, we call him Swami D. Um, I actually met him at the um, Ashra Vidya Gurukulam in um, Pennsylvania. There's a there's a Arsh, there's a Arsha there, which is actually a school for boys that they go study, and you know that's traditionally like it was a boys school where you go study the Vedanta and the Vedas and so forth. And and that's just what it was. It was mainly for boys. Well, I used to visit that studio or oh. that ashram um, quite frequently when I was actually in Harrisburg. Oh. It was only an hour away. But hmm. the studies were very deep for me. And I needed somebody to make it simple. And I think Muji did that. And now that I have a better understanding, I actually went back to that. He's no longer, he's left his body, but I actually went back to his teachings. Um, and they, they actually helped me with navigating the world as well. Wow. So, you know, now I understand that the Vedas and the Vedanta, which is actually the end of the Vedas, is like this Vedanta philosophy, which has the, you know, the Upanishads in there, you know. Um, that part of it actually does focus on self-inquiry as well as the external part, which is um, how to, you know, really just navigate this world as well. This, so, yeah. So those, so I'm, you know, in the studio, I'm going to marry those two. Um, I'm going to bring in the self inquiry, but I am also going to just um, bring in just the, you know, how just I keep going back to just how to navigate yeah. the world from a spirit as a spiritual person. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there's a Sanskrit word, word that I'm not really uh, thinking of right now, mm -hmm. but um, just the Atma in itself and, and, and exploring the soul from the internal and external aspect is where the studio is really going to focus on. So, mm. And it's going to get there through meditation and we're going to have other healing practices such as Reiki. You know, I, I yeah. had a lot of energy work done while I was going through this transformation and it uh, it just it just really blew my mind at how, yeah. 
how important energy is and to protect your energy in certain situations and to know when to share your energy in certain situations. But, you know, you got to like, you got to meet people where they're at. And so you have to kind of discern right. which, which are you in a protective mode or mm-hmm. are you in a, a giving mode, mm-hmm. you know? So, mm-hmm. you know, being able to, to just have that discernment and come up with that, I think that is very important. So I'm going to have uh, healings, um, techniques, you know, tapping, EFT, and so forth. Just and really, but we're going to really talk about real topics. Also. Wow! You know, we're going to have workshops around real topics as well, like things that are really going on with women in society and with the body, with uh, racism. With yeah. I want to have workshops. ageism, ageism, <laughs> ageism. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm now 41, and there's things. <laughs> Still a baby. Ooh, oh, girl, wait till you think like, I ain't no baby no more. <laughs> you know, so we're going to have workshops around yeah. real things that really help us go even deeper into our our, our, our deeper consciousness as well. And wow. have those conversations that help us navigate this world. Well. Yeah, like, yeah. Have those difficult conversations. Like, one thing I will say that I, and you kind of touched on, one thing I will say that people have always told me mm-hmm. was there's, there's something about me that allows people to, they, they say go there with me yes <laughs> yeah no really that's a gift like, yes I feel good. like I can meet people and they're like you know what I can go there with you see I can talk about those things that I'm embarrassed to talk about and now <sighs> I do realize that that's my gift and I just want to bring it to this this thing at the end you know oh like, yeah oh my god see what do they say like when when you hear something over and over again Sometimes it has to hit you like that. Um, yeah. be, you know, you, some, you, oh, thank you. Yeah, oh, thank you. But then one day, I guess it's like, oh, wow. Yeah, I'm hearing this a whole lot. I guess yeah. it, this is my guess. <laughs> totally. See? And I was just like, oh, Nikolai. That's that's... Because that is something I hear about her from you today. I, hear, <laughs> I yeah. hear from everyone I meet. was like, oh, I can go there with you. Yeah. Maybe just a one time. Like, I may meet them once and I never see them again. But for exactly. Reason, they feel like they can just kind of release with me. And I'm like, that is my thing. It's your thing, girl. <laughs> it's your thing. It's your thing. Okay, so wait now. Where can, um, because I know I'm watching your time because I know your yeah. mom and you have some other stuff. That, yeah, but wait. So where where can people find you? Like, where where's your, where's on, is it still ontology or... It is ontology, yes. So I still, so the Veda, uh, Jan will have that, you know, the, the studio aspect to it. And it's also what I have the boutique aspect. Okay. To it, so it's going to be both. Um, the Veda Dan is literally in its infant stages, meaning um, the idea and the concept is there, but I'm still like building the online presence. You know, I okay. just moved into the, I just purchased the property, which is what you see right yeah. now. It's like, it's being painted and there's a lot well, of construction going on, but yeah. We're going to be located, and we're located in Cherry Hill, New okay. Jersey. Okay. Um, we are, um, the target launch date, um, the COVID, I really have to say it's a lot of unknowns, yeah. right? But at least from a virtual aspect, I don't know if we'll be able to come together in uh, joint sessions, but September definitely will we'll launch from a virtual aspect as well. But I just don't know if we're going to have our doors open for Right, you know, right. The community, which is what I want and miss so much. Um, yeah, it's like I need the community. Yeah, I need yeah. This community, you know? yeah. But um, September is when we're going to open. Okay. Um, is where we're targeting to open, and um, yeah, it's the Veda Den. We're in Cherry Veda Hill, Den, right? and and the Veda Den. Okay. Right in Cherry Hill, right on Route Seventy West. Okay. So it's a very every people who are in this area just know Route Seventy. West. Okay. Okay. Um, and it's a very popular just route that allows you access to Philly, um, to oh. you know more southern to the beach. You can get to Delaware. You can get it's just a hub to New York. It's easy to get to from New York. It's like a central location where everyone from these major uh, metropolitan cities can actually come to. Pretty That's easily. perfect. Yeah. Nice. Okay. All right. So yeah, um, yeah, that's the and we're at um one 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 five Route seventy West in Cherry Hill okay. and you know, targeting our launch date, our open date for September. Okay. Yeah, you know, fingers crossed. So Okay, so so hopefully okay, so when I 
usually what I do is like I'll post a picture of you or you can do your company or, or whatever you want uh, when I air this and you are the last this is my end of season one uh, yeah me yep yeah well I'm I'm still gonna do a podcast um, but I'm changing I, I, I love talking to people but I want to make it a little lighter um, so that's something that I'll, I'll share with you later off this. <laughs> so, but I'm going to give myself a little bit of a break because it has been a commitment. It has kept me very busy during this time, but I need, I need to not have these deadlines, you know, looming. Um, so I have enjoyed it and I'm still going to do it, but this is, this is perfect to end, uh, you know, my, my season with you. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm so excited. And but end, yeah, your, 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 new <laughs> your new journey. My new, yeah, I mean it's still gonna be very similar. I'm just gonna make it a little, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but but so what I want to do is like I want to be able to blast social media like your email address so that people you can you know maybe start getting some you know email info and yeah, you know. yeah no absolutely so i just like literally like i said we're in infancy state okay in terms of um so i just finalized like the logo like oh wow yeah, okay so okay I, all right the beta den, right yeah, so okay. i just like literally and yeah i'm actually going to be um so this week uh, a, a, a landing page will go up to start to okay. um have people allow people to register for the newsletter and just updates on where we're okay. opening and so okay. forth. So that information you will have and you will be able to share for sure. Okay. That's okay. My goal this week is to get that that up and going. But okay. yeah, so it's like I'm redoing. Like I, you know, Ontology is there. It's yeah. always been there. I have that website, ontology.com. Yes. So okay. We can talk. Yes. Can, All yeah. Right. You can find me there. That website is there. It's just that this new um, journey is really in its. Infancy, yeah. Infancy stage in terms of, you know, the, the online presence and, yeah. and the branding aspect of it. So. Yes. It's so exciting. It's And it's good. And I can't wait to really visit. I'm, I'm definitely going to join virtually because I want to deepen my own inner spirit and, um, you know, continue my, my journey. Yeah. yeah uh -huh. it's, important. It's, a, it's a journey. And as long as we're in this body right now, yeah. it is continuous and always you know, it's, it's time bound so we need to you know yeah. take it seriously <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> well thank you so much for having me really it's oh. always a pleasure your energy is just oh. when i first met you i was just like no. i mean I, i'm not with us to lie when i first met you you came to me your energy just blew oh me. stop no it didn't <laughs> oh, yes it did i was like Whoa. no <laughs> yours is much stronger than mine no I honey like, no, no. <laughs> I was like, wow, this woman, you know? And then you're gorgeous. No, right? stop. You're an okay. actress thank because you. you are absolutely beautiful. No, so thank you. So I just came through the door once, and I'm like, whoa. Stop it. <laughs> so I appreciate you. Oh, and, Nicolaya. Uh, and you, you know, knowing you and, and you taking the time to, you know, oh. get to know me even more. Stop. And um, I definitely look forward to sharing this journey with you. I think you'll be here. Yeah. <laughs> You'll, you'll be here. I'm, sure. I'm coming. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You will be here. Oh, oh. teaching a workshop or something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so, you, you know, it's like yeah. I, I'm still learning. I, I, I'm i just trying to listen to. I'm not sure. I, I keep on asking, like, self esteem. Huh. Self-esteem and how to take rejection as an actress. Oh, oh, you know, that's. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, that oh, rolls off. Like, that rolls off these days. Okay. Very, yep. Yeah. See? Okay. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Okay. Well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. How does it not break your spirits? And you know, hearing oh. those notes. Oh. You know? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and it. Oh. Wow. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Yeah. And Absolutely. I. I have to share with you since we're talking about spirit. I have learned that nose to me are just a detour. Mm. Yeah. It's just a little detour in life. It's still, you know, whatever my higher power is guiding me towards i'm openly going i'm moving in that flow and i don't know if i don't use the words that you use like the the yoga language um but but i think we're still speaking the same language <laughs> okay all right girl i love you okay all right okay bye-bye <laughs> 
Aww. See? You can find all of her information in the show notes. I always try to listen to my inner voice. It never leads me wrong. And if you want to learn more about yourself, I suggest checking out the Vita Den. As Nikolai said, it's a place to study your higher self. Right? We all could use that these days. All right. Until next time. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please tell a friend. Let's spread the word, okay? I welcome suggestions, comments. I love hearing from you. And as always, life is marvelous and exciting. Go explore it. Your Yogi Venture is waiting. <laughs>